Good afternoon everybody and we're back with physics and today we are dealing with um, the measurement and calculation of pressure and we start with the measurement of pressure, measuring pressure, section 5.4. Uh, before carrying on, please uh, go back and work through section 5.4 and section 5.5. Then, um, look at the example. Uh, work to example 5.2. In section 5.5, you should also work through and work through the section, the questions 5.8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 on page 73. Please note that for those questions, the answers in a book are not correct, the answers at the back of the book. So don't pay any attention to them. And uh, once you've done that, then come back to the video and we will go through the work. Okay. Alright, section 5.4, measuring pressure, we can measure pressure with a manometer. Manometer. You can measure pressure with a manometer. We make this, we, we can, you can actually do it yourself. If you have a glass tube, uh, U-shaped like that, and you connect, um, and you put some water in it, the water will go and lie over there like that. And uh, these two levels will be at the same level. Because this is the, atmos the same atmospheric pressure is pressing down on it there. So um, that is a, a manometer and it shows that the pressure this side and the pressure that side is equal. Okay? But if we connect this to, uh, for instance, an empty coffee bottle, uh, like this here, I suppose this is a, a, a carving bottle like this. Okay. This, and we can make a, a rubber tube to that over there like that. And here we have air in here, and we've still got this water here. And if we squeeze this bottle, then this water will be pushed around uh, further down like that, and this part will be like up there. So our levels will have a different height. This height will be there, this height will be there. And um, this is a, an, an indication of how much more the pressure is than atmospheric pressure. Okay? Because this has to press against the atmospheric pressure. So we, we use this to measure a difference in pressure. Okay? This is the difference in pressure here. Right. And this, um, okay, that's, that's a manometer, how a manometer, manometer works. We can also measure, if we don't want to just measure difference, but we want to actually measure the atmospheric pressure, originally they did it in a barometer. Well, they still do it in a barometer, but there's a couple of snacks. So, a barometer, we measure. Uh, atmospheric pressure, we need a straight tube close at one end that looks like this. Straight, straight glass tube close at one end, okay? And then we take that um, glass tube and we fill it with liquid. And then we have another bowl uh, like this and we also fill it with the same liquid like that. Now this, and then you take this tube, fill it with liquid, carefully turn it upside down under this liquid here and then the, the, the tube will stand straight up with uh, the liquid in the tube and in the bowl, okay? So, um, this is fine. Um, the air pressure outside is pushing down here, like this. And this keeps the liquid pushed up into the tube, okay? So, um, it's, it's quite easy. This, this is if you use water, um, uh, if the water liquid is heavy, then the atmospheric pressure won't be able to hold it. And then this will go down here and you'll have 
a level over there, and this will be a vacuum up there, and this will be the water or the liquid, the heavy liquid, uh, down here, because the, the atmosphere won't be able to hold it. Or if your column is very, very long, like that, like uh, a double story building, okay, and you've got liquid in there and in there, then the atmosphere is also not going to be able, strong enough to hold it, and this liquid level will drop down to there like that, and here you'll have a vacuum, okay? So, um, it's, it's rather a cumbersome thing this, but um, this is how barometer works, actually. So, uh, you, you can make, you can't make a barometer out of water, because the atmosphere, water is quite light, actually, and uh, the atmosphere can hold the water up 10 meters high. Now 10 meters is high as a double story building. So uh, where are you going to get a tube that's 10 meters high to stand in a little bowl of water? That's very difficult. So what we use is we use um, mercury. Mercury is that, is that shiny metallic liquid um, has a mass density of 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter. That is 13.6 times high, heavier than water. So your um, column of mercury will only be uh, round about 760 millimeters. Whereas your column of water is going to be about 10 meters. Okay, so 760 millimeters is about this high, 10 meters, like it's high. So you can do this with mercury, um, and then, then, okay, then you have a vacuum there. So your, your pressure, you, you talk about your pressure as being uh, 760 millimeters Mercury, that's the chemical symbol for mercury, or 775 millimeters, depending on what the actual pressure is that day, it will vary. Okay, but the problem with this is not SI units. We want to have our pressure in SI units. And why do we want that? So that we can easily do calculations with it. Right, so. Um, right, let me just remove this. So, now we've got a definition for pressure. What is pressure? Pressure is a force. We know that it's a force because uh, we can feel it. And it's a force pushing, pressing against a surface. And the surface we can measure as area. So therefore, pressure is force per unit area. Okay? Force per unit area. So we can write it as force over area. That's pressure. And how do we measure force? We measure forces, force in newtons. And how do we measure area? In square meters. In this case, it's always square meters, not square centimeters, because our calculations, the SI units, uh, for length is meters. Okay, so um, now you will see that, uh, for instance, what happens if we have a bigger force? Okay, by the way, this is uh, Pascal's. This is called Pascal. So this is called Pascal. And if our force is bigger, our pressure is bigger. If our square meters is smaller, 
our force is also bigger. Why? Because if you've got a fraction like 1 over 3, if you have 1 over 6, if this gets bigger, then your fraction is actually smaller. 1 over 12 is a smaller fraction. So the bigger the, the area, the smaller the pressure. Okay? The smaller the area, the bigger the pressure because this is inversely proportional and this is directly proportional to the pressure. Okay. So um, let us go and we'll just have a look at example 5.2. Example 5.2 uh, 5.2 says that uh, we have a 600 Newton force. 600 Newton force per square centimeter. A square centimeter is a very small uh, area. And if we want to change that to um, Pascals, we need to change the square centimeter to square meters. How do we do that? We think in terms of area. If this is a square meter, okay, how many centimeters on this side? In one meter, there's a hundred centimeters. Okay, and in on this side, there's also a hundred centimeters. Okay, like this, you can draw a hundred little lines like that. Okay, and area is a hundred times a hundred. A hundred times a hundred is one and four zeros. Ten thousand square centimeters. Now we go over to scientific notation. How do we write 10,000 in scientific notation? 1 times 10 to the 4. Okay? 1 times 10 to the 4. But we are going from a small thing like square centimeters to a big thing like square meters. So our number has to get smaller. So this 4 has to be a minus because we're going to divide. Okay? So, and then we get, um, so this becomes 600 newtons per 1 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. Okay? And if you work that out, um, you get a... Uh, 600 over 1 times 10 to the minus 4 is 0 0.00001 Okay Let's put that out in the calculator So it's uh, 600 divided by 1 exponent minus 4 equals so the, the pressure here is equal to 6 times 10 to the 6 pascals. Okay? So that's 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pascals. So that's 6 million pascals, which we don't write using like that, better to write 6.0 times 10 to the 6 pascals. And this is a kilopascal. And this is a megapascal. So it's 6.0 times 10. So it's 6.0 megapascals. Okay. Right. Uh, now we move on to the questions. Uh, you shouldn't have any trouble with the questions. Uh, from questions on page 73 from 5.8, 5.9, 5.10 but we can work through 5.11 and uh, 5.12 okay. so question 5.11 this is a very easy one um, it says uh, we have a 40,000 newtons, 40,000 newtons, and 40,000 newtons at 
acting on two square meters. Okay, so this is Newton per square meter. So straight away we know that's already in Pascals because it's Newton per square meter. So we just have to divide 2 into that. So that's 20,000 Pascals. Or 20 kilo Pascals. Because to go to kilo, does V0 is takes you to kilo. Right, question 5.12, 5.12, here we have a swimming pool. They say that the uh, swimming pool has got a horizontal level bottom. That's, they're, they're just telling you that the depth of the swimming pool is everywhere the same. Okay, so the pressure is everywhere the same, because the deeper you go, the higher the pressure. So it's all the same depth. And this swimming pool is 10 meters by 4 meters. So we have the area of the pool is equal to 40 square meters. Okay? And they say that the pressure on the bottom of the pool is 15,000 pascals. 15,000 Pascals. Now you must be careful here and understand this definition of Pascals. This Pascals is Newton per square meter. This means that for every square meter here, every square meter here, there is 15,000 Newtons pressing down on it. Okay, because it's 15,000 newtons per square meter. 15,000, 15,000, 15,000. So, you can add these all up, or you can just multiply. So, it's quite easy actually now, once you understand the concept. Um, the question is, they want to know what is the total force that is pressing down on the bottom of the pool. The total force. That's the force of all these square meters together. So we've got 40, uh, 40 square meters, 40 square meters, and each one is 15,000 newtons. So 15,000 newtons per square meter, and then 40 square meters. And 40 times 15,000 works out at um, 6 times 10 to the 5 newtons. That is the total force pressing down on the bottom of the pool if you add up every square meter. Because this, this question asks for a force. Because it asks for a force, the answer must be newtons. You can't give an answer of, as pressure if they're asking for a force. So this is, and this is actually, just to put it in perspective, it's 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 noughts. 6 and 5 noughts. It's 600 kilo pascal. Okay, so there we go. That's that's it for today, and uh, I hope I hope that's helped. Thank you very much.